said, what do you want to be when you grow up? He said, you want to be a doctor. And when he was a teenager, still wanted to be a doctor. When he did med, still wanted to be a doctor. When he vet school, still wanted to be a doctor. And 25 years later, he is a doctor and really still enjoys what he does. He is in the minority. Most of us are like me. When you asked me what I wanted to do when I was young, it was a little bit like my son. When I asked him what he wanted to be when he was young, and he said he wanted to be a doctor. Um, but he also wanted to be a Martian and a dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> and the bottom line is, if you'd asked me, I probably wouldn't have had much idea what I wanted to be. I certainly would never imagine the career that I have today. So the, the thing is then, what do you do? And I did lots of things in high school, for example. I was in the drama club. I was in the German club. I was in track. I was in honor society. I was in marching band and jazz band. And the idea was, I tried and did lots of things. And by the time I got done with high school and was ready to go to college, I really didn't know what I was passionate about, other than I wanted to get as far away from my parents as I possibly could. <laughs> so, that brings you to the next obstacle of finding your um, passion. College costs a lot of money. And it's especially gotten bad in the last couple of years. The green line is tuition and fees. You can see in terms of general cost of living, um, it's, the tuition and college has gotten very, very expensive. But I want to say that it's not so different from when I was going to school. I was a senior. My father was unemployed that year. My mother was finishing her graduate degree. I was the third of four, four kids. And, and my parents were not planned. I'm the exact opposite. And they um, said, you know, sat me down. And, I, and we lived in a small town with a, a state university there. I said, Rob, we can't pay for you to go to the University of Washington in Seattle. I said, I will tell you. <laughs> so what I did that summer is I worked as an apple orchard in 100 degree heat with rattlesnakes everywhere in order to earn enough money to go to my first quarter at the University of Washington because that's all I could pay for, but I was going to do it because I was passionate about getting away from my parents. <laughs> yeah, six weeks before I went, my dad got hired, my mom got uh, a new job, they had money, my financial aid came through and off I was at the University of Washington, Seattle, and the rest is history. But the point is, college is expensive. But if you, and you need to pay attention to that, but if you're really passionate about something, you can figure out a way, I think, to make it happen. Now, and I'll give you another example of this. So I went to, this, I went to graduate under, undergrad in Seattle. I worked for, uh, well, first off, I graduated, and I traveled around the world for seven months because I'm passionate about traveling. Then I got, came to the worst recession in years and found a job at a nonprofit and loved it. It was an international affairs working nonprofit at the great time. Never paid on time, not paid much money. And old, what, what was great about that job is that I met people in business who were working to make the world a better place. Both my, both my parents were in education, so I didn't know, and this was the end of the 70s, early, end of the 60s, early 70s, so business people were greedy and evil, and sometimes that people who were in business who were greedy. In fact, they were being paid better than me and on time to do things that make the world a better place. This is really cool. So I switched over to the profit sector. sector worked for a number, number of companies, but after a couple of years, I found that I was bumping up against the, the level of my sort of knowledge about the business world because my undergraduate degrees, I have two of them, one in German literature and the other in Russian history, because I enjoy them. Now, they may be a very well-rounded person, they may be a good critical thinker, but you might kind of wonder, what does that have to do with Eli Lilly Company? Well, the road to get there was to go to business school. And I wanted to go on the East Coast for a new experience, and I researched all the schools, and there was one that had a mix of quantitative analysis, which was my weakness, and international that was perfect for me. Um, very exclusive, hard to get into, it's the only school I've applied to. Now, my friends at the time said, Robin, this is a high-risk strategy. You're going to a school that doesn't accept a lot of people. What if you don't get in? And I said, I don't get in, I'll apply again next year. And I was actually waitlisted, and at the last minute, um, in order to do the two dual degree program I wanted, I got in, and on three days' notice, moved my entire life from Seattle to Philadelphia. I had $1,000 and a computer. And notice that, that the total there is 90000 That's just if you're going to do business degree. I was doing two degrees, so my total first year budget was $30,000. And I got on a plane with no financial aid offer, $1,000 to do. But again, I felt like this was the right place for me, and I would make it happen. So I would say you need to pay attention to those costs of college, and I'll have another suggestion about that. But don't let that be a barrier if you're really passionate about that school. The other people say today, oh, you got to get a job that pays well because the economy is really fragile. And they're right. The economy is fragile. Uh, you may not know all these terms, but the, the government debt as a percentage of our gross domestic product is over 100%, where the norm is usually around 60%. This makes people in businesses and Wall Street and so on very nervous and can result in some instability on the job front. But I would say the solution is not what everybody says is get a well-paid STEM job. Yes, they do pay that. Yes, they, they can 
can't be better. But let's look at that. Let's break that down a little bit. If you look at the green line, if you graduate from high school or even don't graduate from high school, and maybe you did coding training like you got here, you don't go to college, you will make about 35% more than someone at the same level of education who doesn't have that STEM training. So if you don't go to college or don't finish high school, a STEM job is a definitely good, good option. But keep digging down and you can see the blue line. If you have a bachelor's degree and a STEM career versus a non-STEM career, then you will make about 20% more. So if I'm making $10 an hour with my German in history, you're making $12 an hour as an accountant, and I'm, you're miserable, I'm happy. Who has a better deal? And when you go to graduate school, the difference is even less, $10. So you're miserable on Wall Street working 80 hours a day, uh, a week, making $11 an hour, and I'm making $10 an hour doing something I'm very happy at. So the point is, STEM jobs can be amazing jobs. I, I spend 95% of my day, as I said, working with clinicians and engineers and all these bright, wonderful people. And I wish I had known more about how you can apply science and technology solutions for people in making the world a better place. I wish I had. My parents were both teachers. That wasn't part of their growing up. But I would say, if you love STEM careers, go for it. Don't go for it simply because you think you're going to make a lot more money and you're going to have job security, because that's the next thing. If you look at the unemployment rate, that last one was unemployed for STEM versus non-STEM for everybody. But if you look at college grads, which I'm hoping most of you are considering, the difference between an unemployed STEM major and an unemployed non-STEM major is basically zero today. So if you think that pursuing that well-paid STEM job, that, that, that engineering degree at Purdue that your, your dad or your mom is pushing you to do versus history, then think again. I'm not saying you're going to make as much money as a German major, as an engineering major from Purdue, but if you're happy, don't, you know, don't let thinking that you'll be more secure be one of the reasons why you choose one over the other. Okay, there's another myth about the STEM. And this, I've read a wonderful book called The Numerati, I would highly recommend it for anyone. And this is the, the idea that the world is divided between word people, word people, and numbers people. Okay, so I have a German literature degree and a Russian history major. Hmm, I must be a word person. But I have a master's in business in finance. That makes me a number of person. But, but I got that master's in international studies. So what, what am I? I'm both. And the idea that you have to be one or the other, I think, is a real fallacy about STEM careers. Because in the world today, the challenges we face, whether it's global warming or feeding the world, require people who can use the tools and the number box, but also understand the human connections on the other side. And if you can do both of those things, you are going to be incredibly valuable. So don't view it as an either or, view it as a both. Um, so lastly, here's the, here's the how to do it. I'm seeing my time here, so I've got to pay attention to that. <laughs> what, what, um, what, how do you go about finding it? So Robin, you found your passion. Sounds like you tried lots of different things, ultimately found it. How do I find my passion? I'm 15, 16, 17 years, or I'm 45, or whatever, and I'm still trying to find my passion. And the yes in the get a job, find your passion is get a job, even as a team, lots of jobs. Take volunteer projects. Go look at your, your place where you worship and see if there's something that you can do there. Do things that you can't, have never done. Talk to adults who seem really energized about what they're doing and ask them if you can shadow them for the day. But working is an especially good way to figure out what your passion is. And what's great about that is that you can do things working that help you, that, that in contrast to the classroom, that help you figure out what you don't like. One of the worst jobs I ever had was one of the best paid, but everybody I worked with, or not everybody, but a large majority of the, of the people I'm working with were cheating on their spouses. And I just found that very unpleasant to go to work every day and look in someone's face and knowing that they were cheating on their wife or their secretary, it's mostly the men. I didn't like it. it. The money wasn't enough to make me feel like I wasn't dirty when I went home at the end of the day. Because these, these were men that I liked, but they were kind of and I did not want to be in that work environment. So you, you, want to, you, want to be, you want to focus on that and your value. I jumped out of values first. The other thing is focus on what you want to do, what seems interesting to you. As a teen, it's particularly hard because everybody kind of 
does the same stuff. And if you like what everybody else is doing, that's okay, explore that too. But if you're if there's something different that you're really interested in, you go, ooh, why are you wanting to do that? Try not to listen to the naysayers. Try to do it anyways, because it's about your interests, not the group's interests. Experiment. This is a great time in your life. And I would say actually argue at any time in your life, but it's easier when you're a teenager to experiment. You're going to fail. You're going to have some jobs that you hate. My son last year worked as a lifeguard. And you know what? Lifeguard jobs are abundant. He got paid well. It was easy to get a job. But it was too lonely for him. My son is very gregarious. He needs to a job that's in a team. But neither he nor I realized that until he worked in a job that he sat up on a big chair all day long by himself. Now he knows something about himself that will help him with the next job. That's why jobs, projects, volunteer clubs, anything at school that can help you figure out what you don't like and why is important. So that job wasn't a failure for him. It helped clarify what would make him happier and more successful in the job. So down. <laughs> this is one particularly hard for me because I'm one of these people who, even though I'm from the laid back Northwest, I talk 90 miles an hour and I do everything fast. But there's no rush. If it's for the teens in here, the students in here, you have plenty of time to figure this out. So don't worry. Don't, don't worry about failing at something. Just take your time. And for the parents who may be sitting here going, you know what, I'm still on my passion. I don't get up every day wishing I had to pay to go to work. I would say, you know, say the advice. Slow down. Start looking around. Try some new things as a volunteer outside of your work and figure out what it is. Maybe some things you did when you were younger that you everybody said, oh, you need to get a job that pays well and is secure. Maybe go back to those things that you really enjoyed then and see if there's some way you can leave it in your life more now. I talk about values that <coughs> spend money. And then lastly, and this is important, accept non-acceptance. I had recently met a wonderful woman whose son is a very su successful film director in Hollywood. I said, how did your son become a successful film director? She said, well, he studied pre-med at Emory. <laughs> I said, okay, tell me more. Well, it turns out, you know, he liked science, and he liked medical, and he liked medicine, and he liked the idea of helping people, and he studied it, and he did all four years, and was very successful, and accepted into medical school. But while he was in high school, he really liked helping with production, film production, theater, and so on. And when he got into college, you know, he was doing all this pre-med stuff, but then he thought, you know what, I'm going to still do some of that other stuff, too, he did. And by the time he got to the end of his college degree, and he was ready to go on this beautiful launch pad towards becoming a doctor, he realized what made him most excited and energized was helping with those theater productions. So he went home and told his folks, Mom, Dad, I'm going to move to LA and become a film director. Now, you can imagine how that went. Probably, probably not that great. But you know what? He, he, I don't know if they helped him or not, but the bottom line is he accepted the fact that the path that he was on was not the one that was going to have him energized and excited about the day, and he switched paths. And today, he's successful at what he's doing, I, I suspect in part because he's passionate about it. Now, not everybody who's passionate about someone, something is going to have success. You have to accept that there's some, some people won't get it and they won't see your vision, but you won't have any regrets. So, what's the takeaway for the sophomores if there's any freshmen in the room? You need to get out there and start doing lots of things. Get a job on your weekends, evening, part-time, whatever. Start, start attacking the sport of sport of life. Try different clubs, go to fairs, talk to adults, ask them why they like their work. Do lots of things to figure out what it is that you really enjoy and that you feel good about, even if you're not good at it. Juniors and seniors, you need to start to focus a little bit. I know you have great counselors who probably need me now for giving you this advice, but I think to talk about one or two or three things that you really are interested in and motivated to do work with and you can talk about how you've learned and how you've engaged in it and make the world a better place perhaps is going to do far more on your job and improve your college application than having 12 different things where you really don't have that energy behind any of them. Adults, I would say, please don't give up. I've been 26 years at Lilly and I'm actually in the same place as the teams in this room because I'm trying to figure out what is my next passion because I'm about ready to go on to the next thing. And I have skills that I haven't used in many, many years, and I'm trying to figure out how I can test those in order to see what's next for me. And lastly, I, this is very personal, but the reason I was invited for this talk, to give this talk today was because of a day I organized at Lily for Take Your Daughters and Sons to Work. And at the end of it, I summarized it. I didn't even present, but at the end of it, I summarized it. We had statisticians, we had engineers, we had marketers, we had biologists. But the theme that ran
ran through all of their talks about what they did and why they loved it was that they feel like they are making a difference in the world. You can make a difference in the world if you have a building company. You can make a difference in the world as an artist. You can make a difference in the world as an engineer. There are all sorts of ways to do that, but I think ultimately that you will be passionate and sustain that passion if you're making a difference. So if you do all that, I think you'll be happy. Not all the time, but you'll be happier. And you'll look forward each day. Problems will be smaller. You're going to be enthusiastic and engaged. You'll be positive. You won't be a Debbie Downer. Have you ever, I'm sure some of you have met these people that no matter what's going on, they are just not happy. And I suspect that they have somewhere lost that, uh, lost what they loved and made them feel good. And, and the, th the thing that's neat about pursuing this is you might not even be good at what you're passionate about, but learning it is fun. Practicing it is fun. And if you keep doing that, you'll be motivated to keep doing it enough to the point where you are good. So in conclusion, I want to say thank you very much for inviting me today. I wish you all the best, whether you're an adult or a student, on finding your passion. And I hope that I give you a few ideas on how to make that happen. Thank you very much.